So what is this notion of self? Where does this come from? What is What are we talking about when we talk about the self? Well, one way to understand this is in the context of predictive learning and this idea that we developed in the learning chapter that we're, we always learn by kind of predicting what's going to happen. And part of that, a big part of that is integrating all of the different sensory cues and being able to sort of coordinate what we're seeing visually with what we're feeling somatosensory, uh, what we're thinking about as a, a plan or a goal, and what we actually experience in terms of our own motor actions. All of these different aspects are things that we kind of put together and try to understand in some kind of coherent way as a kind of model of our self. And so one really compelling demonstration of this uh, that really gives you a, a very compelling subjective sense of the self is this rubber hand illusion where you have a participant here, um, they can't see their real hand and they see this rubber hand, but they feel the sensory feeling, the somatosensory feeling of their hand being brushed because the experimenter is simultaneously brushing the rubber hand and their real hand at the same time. And that coincident, coordinated, kind of predictively accurate, correlated uh, signal there of the, the feeling of, of having your hand brushed and the sight, the seeing of your hand being brushed gives rise to this very compelling and very strange feeling that that rubber hand is actually your own hand right? Because you, you kind of integrate it into yourself. You know that you're getting these somatosensory feelings. You're seeing this ha happen there and your brain just tries to make sense of this and put it all together in a coherent way. And, and the sensible interpretation is that must be your hand. I was actually a participant in this experiment when it was first run by Matt Botvinnik and John Cohen. Uh, and really, I can tell you that, that you have this very strange, compelling feeling that that hand is your hand. Uh, and if you ever get the opportunity to, to be a participant in this experiment, I strongly recommend it. Get your friends to set it up or something for you. And so another aspect of this whole kind of self model uh, comes from uh, studies of mirror neurons. Rizzolatti and, and colleagues have discovered that there are neurons in the frontal cortex that respond to the self-initiated action in the same way as seeing another person execute those same actions. So we're able to actually kind of like this mirror principle, see uh, other people performing actions and, and encode them using the same internal representations that we have for our own personal actions. And so this ability to kind of map what's happening outside and other people into our own kind of motivational structures and internal self model reflects how strong that model is and how much we use our own kind of model of ourselves to understand the world at large. So we're always trying to understand what other people's motivations are by mapping them on to you know, how, how that would make us operate. And so at some level, we're very empathetic in that sense, but also uh, we're also uh, somewhat uh, always coloring things by our own interpretation, our own lenses. And so not necessarily really able to see things through other people's eyes. This ability to map between uh, our own uh, internal subjective sense of uh, how we understand things and how other people in the world are operating is a very important construct called theory of mind. Uh, and there's these other tests of kind of self-awareness. And so these are ways in which we can assess to what extent uh, people and other animals have some sense of self. These are kind of the objective tests of self, having a self model. So one thing that people have done is put a little kind of spot on somebody's forehead. You sit somebody in front of the mirror and if they start kind of trying to figure out what's going on uh, with this splotch, then you know that they sort of have a sense that that's me in the mirror and I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this splotch on my face. And then the theory of mind test, this is a classic kind of Sally Ann task where you have a scenario where one character, uh, Sally, uh, goes away while Anne kind of moves the ball from uh, this original kind of box here into her own box. And so Sally, because she's gone away, doesn't see this ball being moved, right? But you, as a participant in this experiment, 
can see it, right? So your state of knowledge is the ball has moved to the box. But what you have to understand in this whole scenario is that Sally does not see the ball being moved. And so now when you get asked this question, where does Sally look for the ball, right? Uh, you know, a lot of kids will just kind of go on their own and understanding and say, well, yeah, Sally's going to look here because that's where I think the ball is. But uh, to really have this theory of mind, this understanding of what other minds are like and how other people would need to actually see something to understand that it's been moved, um, then uh, that, that ability kind of emerges around after four years of age and kids finally uh, kind of recognize that Sally will actually still look back at the original location, uh, even though you might look elsewhere. So we see so many of the uh, social phenomena. Again, we talked about the social comparison. Um, there's also uh, self-serving biases, positive illusions, uh, ways in which we have these pervasive biases in understanding the world. So, you know, this classic thing where you really have this strong feeling like you're doing 75% of the housework, regardless, uh, everybody feels that. Um, that can't be true, mathematically speaking, but uh, everybody has that feeling. Everybody always feels like they're above average. All these kinds of positive self-assessments, uh, um, which also coexist kind of inconsistently with also pervasive negative self-assessments and negative feelings about the self. And so you get kind of both sides of this, but it's, it's really hard to come up with, quote unquote, objective uh, assessments of the self because you have conflicting motivational desires, right? You have these strong uh, motivations to maintain that self-efficacy, that sense of self-control uh, on the one hand, but also, you know, natural kind of anxiety and, and negative feelings as well. Uh, and especially interpreting all these kind of social forces that we're getting from the outside. And so, you know, you get, you get all these complicated dynamics. Uh, but in general, when we look statistically across across people, there does send, tend to be this kind of positive self delusion underlyingly uh, that most people have a, a higher impression than is kind of quote unquote accurate.